just had a complete nightmare. So I've got the axles in, shifter linkages in, and I went to put the clutch cable back on and I could not find the bracket. The bracket is this one. I think I searched for 45 minutes to an hour and just could not find it anywhere. I assumed I'd taken off the clutch bracket whenever I'd taken the gearbox off. So I sort of had an idea in my head of where I would have put it. And I was searching and searching. I'd, clean, I'd end up cleaning up the whole gap bridge, just trying to find this one tiny bracket. The one thing that saved me with this was I was actually able to go back into the footage I'd taken from the video pulling it apart. And you can see, you can see there's, there it is. That's the bracket. And you can see me carefully putting all the bolts back in. But what this told me was I'd actually taken out the clutch bracket way, way in the beginning when I was just taking the engine apart. And I remembered I'd thrown a bunch of that stuff in the shed instead of the garage from the very beginning, like the catch can and the battery and all that. So I went there, the first thing I found was that clutch bracket. So we can continue. Oh, okay. So it's been a while since I've updated the camera died. So I just had to sit and let it charge for a while there. I've got the engine pretty much back together. Um, yeah, lots of bits replaced, got the oil in it. Um, all wired in. Um, a little unsure about how the vacuum lines are supposed to be routed. So I've kind of just guessed. Um, and if it runs bad, I'll have to sort that out. Um, yeah, another thing I did was I disconnected the wastegate. So it's just sort of flattened around there. Uh, just... Yeah, it's mainly just to while we're testing it so that it doesn't actually hit boost pressure. Um, yeah, so the next thing is I just need to throw the battery in. I'm not going to put the tray and all in because I've, I've more to do. Um, I just want to sort of set it in there and fire it up and see what happens. Yeah. The main thing is just we want to see is there any oil leaks and do we have oil pressure? Those are the two bits we're really, really concerned about. Just one last sanity check. Everything looks okay. Mm, give it a crack. Oh. We can build oil pressure with the engine not running. Turning over, okay. It hasn't built oil pressure. Just give a quick check. We're not leaking from anywhere. No 
ますはい、ベルズオイルのValves through the valve cover. Sounds alright. Check this room then. One, two, three. Yeah. Must have fuel. Give it another crack. Let's see if it'll start. Are we pulling a vacuum? Oh, it did start there. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Like, it didn't sound too bad. One thing I want to do is I want to pull the power off the wideband gauge because I don't like it starting and stopping and starting so much because I've heard that can sort of mess with the heater element. So. <laughs> I think it is. One of the vacuum lines I was definitely suspicious of. I think I'm going to plug that one.
we've got oil pressure. We've obviously got fuel and spark because it will start, but then it dies. And I notice the engine light stays on. Another thing I want to do is actually I want to drain the oil out of it because there's just so much crap in the engine. I wanted to just do one, you know, a couple of starts to let any oil cycle. I wonder if I should order a new set of plugs because those plugs work proper, properly manky. I don't know. I think I need to understand the the vacuum writing for this better. I don't understand it enough. Because I think something's just wrong with the vacuum writing. Hmm, let's pull in a good vacuum on the gauge. I don't know, and I also think it's throwing an engine light and I think I just need to figure out how to read that because I've no idea what it's telling me I'll get, so unless I need to get welding gas, do the breather I need to figure out the vacuum routing and I need to figure out some way of knowing what the uh, engine light means. So, lots to do. But yeah, hopefully it's something simple. I just want to drive this thing now. We're so close. But yeah, so hopefully next time we can actually get it running properly and figure out why it's this unhappy. But it builds oil pressure. That's a big win. It means the oil pump's actually working and like it builds it pretty quickly. And you can see it dies off whenever you shut the car off. So it's not like it's pressurizing the oil too much. Now whether the oil pressure's high enough I don't know but at least it's there. I'd, I'd say it's got to be vacuum related because it seems like it can't idle. Now whether it's got a vacuum leak or the sensors just aren't reading right because it's not configured correctly, I don't know. Yeah, I gotta see if I can try and find a diagram for it. But yeah, hopefully next time it works.